I know a woman who spent a month once on Axel Heiberg Island. It's one of the northernmost and most isolated pieces of land on earth. And she told me as the plane that took her up there flew away, she all of a sudden became conscious of the fact that she was alone on this island, far away from any help. Anything could happen. And the feeling that washed over her was pretty powerful. It was fear. But she responded wisely to the fear. She realized okay, she had to be careful. She was extra careful where she stepped, extra careful how she did things so that she didn't suddenly fall and break something, a bone here or a bone there. And spent the entire month being very heedful. This is how these three qualities come together. There's intelligent fear, and there's conviction, and there's heedfulness. And they all work together to strengthen your practice. I know psychologists who've <coughs> asked me why Buddhism doesn't list fear as one of the basic unskillful qualities, and that fear in and of itself is not necessarily unskillful. If it's combined with greed or aversion or delusion, then it is unskillful. But the Buddha listed two kinds of fear that are actually helpful in the practice. One is simply the quality of heedfulness, realizing that your actions make a difference and you could very easily do something really unskillful. The second is a quality called otapa, the fear of the consequences of unskillful actions. This is what motivates us to practice. If we don't see any dangers in life, why bother? If we see everything is safe, everything is designed for our comfort and well-being, and there's really no need for conviction, and of course there's no need for the practice, why put yourself out? Why make an extra effort? But deep down in the mind, everybody has this sense that okay, something's wrong. Things could go wrong. And either we try to cover it up with platitudes, or we start getting unrealistic and very unskillful kinds of fears going, neither of which is helpful. The best way to deal with our fear is to learn how to make it intelligent, so we're very clear about what really is scary, what really is dangerous out there. And that's when we start the conviction, okay, I've got to do something about this, and I can do something about this. The Buddha talks about contemplations for monks out in the forest. So you can contemplate different kinds of dangers. That you realize aging can come, illness can come, disorder in society can come. And when these things happen, it's, it's going to be very hard to practice. It's not going to be easier then than it is now. So now that you've got the opportunity, why don't you make an extra effort? Realizing that you've got to prepare your mind. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to deal with illness? Are you ready to deal with social upheavals, famines, and that kind of thing? And if you're not, there's work that needs to be done. And so being very conscious of skillful fears helps you to deal with unrealistic fears. It gives you a place where you can focus your efforts and focus your desire for what you need to do. You need to train the mind. You don't know what's going to happen in the future, but you do know whatever happens, you're going to need more mindfulness, you're going to need more alertness, more discernment, more concentration. You're going to need to have a safe place inside. This is why we meditate. So if you find your conviction getting lax, it basically comes down to, why should I bother? Then remind yourself of why you should bother. It's 
worth noting that the forest tradition grew up in a very poor part of Thailand, where people live with the facts of poverty and danger all around them. And they're very alive to the fact that life is precious and it's also very fragile. Our state of mind is precious, but it's also very fragile. Our happiness is precious, but also fragile. That was what gave him the conviction to go out and do the practice 100 percent. This was a period when the Pali Canon was being rediscovered in Thailand. A lot of the basic teachings were being made available. And the people who were making them available practiced to some extent. But they also had other issues. They lived in more comfortable places. Things weren't quite as fragile. At least they didn't see them as quite as fragile. But it took a very good, <coughs> strong and clear sense that there is danger in life, and there is appropriate fear, and there is inappropriate fear. So inappropriate fear gets in the way of your actually doing what's skillful. So you've got to find the right balance between too much fear and too little fear, i.e. Hysterical fear and complacency. Ill-placed fear and complacency. Well-placed fear is that situations could arise in, in the world and you might do something really, really unskillful as a result. That's a danger to really watch out for. Because here you are, cutting the root of your happiness. out of a sense of unskillful fear, greed, aversion, delusion. So if you sense that there's still something in you that could do something unskillful like that, you've got to work on it. Find a basis for your happiness inside that can't be threatened by changes in society or changes in your body or changes in whatever around you. Remember John Sawat, as he was a few months away from passing away. He'd been in an automobile accident, suffered brain injury. And I mentioned to me one time that his brain was sending him very weird perceptions. But he'd been training his mind, and so he could recognize them as weird perceptions. And then he wanted to say, But that thing I got from my meditation, that hasn't changed. That thing is our place of safety. And even though he couldn't give long Dharma talks after his accident, he would always talk about the sense of refuge. The teachings really do provide refuge, and there are lots of dangers out there that we need refuge from, and dangers in here that we need refuge from. But the refuge is genuine. We have to have a sense of how much we need that refuge. And that's what gives us the conviction to stick with the practice, even when it gets hard. So learn how to cultivate a healthy, wise sense of fear. Articulate that to yourself. And then also articulate to yourself what your other fears are. Make a comparison. And you find that this helps set your priorities straight and strengthens your conviction that what really needs to be done is to focus on your actions in thought, word, and deed, to develop your mind more than it is now. Until you get to that point that the Buddha called, attaining the as yet unattained, knowing the as yet unknown, reaching the as yet unreached. Find that thing that is really special in your true place of safety, your true harbor and refuge. That's the only guarantee there is. No other happiness in the world can be guaranteed. <laughs>